On today's show, we're breaking down game day execution. Hey guys, welcome back to Strategic Baseball Podcast. I hope everybody's doing really well. Uh, today, Daryl and I are going to break down the game day execution. So Jeff and Daryl here, and we help baseball players get to the next level with a strategic advantage so that they can play with supreme confidence against the best players at any level. In every episode, we promise to deliver value on the strategic side of player development to help your players compete with players just as good, if not better than them. Remember, Daryl's a pitching strategist. I'm a hitting strategist, and this is Strategic Baseball Podcast. If you are interested in joining our circle, head over to strategic-baseball.com, and you can find that in the show notes, and submit your email to always get a reminder each time we release a new episode, weekly tip from Daryl and I, and a PDF transcription and visual of the previous episode previous episode and much more if you are a player parent or coach who is interested in learning more about how the strategic advantage baseball process works for you and your unique situation please email me at jeff at athletic-mission.com or daryl at dc at startpitching.com you can find that in the show notes and we would love to arrange a time to speak with you and see how we can help all right daryl i'm gonna let you kick this off we are talking about the game day execution piece of the strategic advantage baseball process. Yes. After this, the last few shows, I think this is just kind of, you know, to tie it all together. And, and again, I think it's just to kind of reinforce what the ultimate goal is for these players. And, and that's to show up on game day and compete and, and have success. And in baseball, Sometimes success can be defined in so many different ways that that we don't take it in context, either as parents or as coaches or instructors. And so today I just kind of wanted to, to kick this around in this show because of of the unique kind of setup that you and I have. We we really work as consultants and and we don't do teams out of athletic mission and we don't really focus on the the team aspect of it it really is about the individual player that comes in and kind of how how we walk through what their goals is really and i think that gets lost sometimes because is as instructors are as and there's so many specialists in the game of baseball now that are really good Uh, you know the velocity guys and the swing guys and the mechanic guys and strength and conditioning and and the biomechanics guys, and there's so many different ways that that we can really kind of uh, dissect and break down these young players that I think they get overwhelmed and the parents get overwhelmed. And even as coaches, we get overwhelmed with like all the, the possibility or the prospects or in some cases, I think, you know, we go so negative that when somebody comes in the doors, we we can really start over assessing. And I know that probably sounds a little weird, but when you start with the player and what their end goal is, and and obviously if they're coming to see us, they're struggling with something they want help with. And most of the time it's it manifested the problem manifested itself in a game scenario or in a game situation or a lack of success in a game. And I think when we break it down from that perspective and and you and I sit down and, and we have pretty in-depth, you know, kind of onboarding conversations before we even take anybody on or a deeper assessment piece about really what is the ultimate goal. You know, if it's just to be a, a good player, a good rec player, or just have fun during the summer, then how do we how do we help them get to that point? If it's somebody that really is is wanting to make a JV team or a varsity team or an elite summer balls or travel ball team, then kind of the goal and, and, and what drives us to try to help them get that plan is a little bit different because of what they need to happen and how fast they need it to happen. And then, you know, long term, if we see them and, and they say, yeah, I'd like to be a college player or or even play at the pro level one day, and and we see that type of 
initial physical capability and and even that initial desire, that initial kind of intellectual interest in baseball and and really taking it to a deeper level more than just, you know, showing up and playing three or four months out of the year, really dedicating a specific amount of time and a, a big part of their life to really wanting to chase this dream or this goal of being an elite level player. And I think the way we assess and the way we try to really help these guys and, and parents find find that little bit, and it don't have to be perfect. You don't have to know everything you want to do at 12 or 13 or 14, though it does feel like we push these kids to want to commit to that early. But I think what it, what we're looking for is that mindset. And, and as we touched on these last few shows is really understanding that process of, okay, yeah, it does start with some, some desire, some intellectual interest in baseball, this, uh, this wanting to play and, and be good for whatever the driving motivator is. It might be just that you want to go hang out and you love your teammates. You like the kids that you play with and it's cool just hanging around and playing you really don't care how the game turns out. It's just about social. It's just about, you know, being on a team. And then you got some guys that really are about, hey, I want to start. I want to, I really want to play. And then you got those guys, I call them the reward guys that, hey, they're looking long term, like they're serious about it. They really are committed and they love the game. And I think a lot of times as coaches, we don't take that piece and pers- that perspective into play. Do they really just play for respect where they want to be around their friends and be liked? Are they playing for recognition? Now they're trying to get the attention of coaches and, and really looking to, to play more and, and really make a difference on the team. Or are they one of the better players on that team? And now the expectation level changes and, and they, they really are playing for that rewards that, the coaches expect them to be the best player. They expect to be one of the better players. And and in big situations and in big games, you know, they're expected to deliver or at least give that team or give their team the best chance. And I think when we kind of kind of analyze it from that perspective, then we can take these guys and these young players and really grow them not only intellectually and mentally and physically, but now we actually can prepare them strategically. So they do show up on game day with whatever their goal is, whatever their intent is, as far as the big picture of why they play baseball. And then we can really drill it down. And I think from from your and I perspective, a lot of the people come in, and I think we're going to touch on this in in the next show or two, is why guys struggle or why guys are looking for help. And, and really, when you start breaking down and having these little bit deeper conversations, man, it, it's really great that we get that feedback and we get these kids to really tell us what they think and how they feel about the game. Because ultimately, their, their level of commitment to practice, their level of commitment to doing the work and, and the boring practice that you and I always refer to, is, is going to be the driving factor in how well they continue to grow and develop as a player. And I think when we see it from that perspective, now game day truly does become the reward. And I think in a lot of places in the, that what we're seeing and the feedback you and I are getting is that when we sit down and, and really have this initial assessment or evaluation or the current state assessment, you and I call it, when we have that, it, it's, it's always interesting because we think we're going to hear some common, you know, kind of issues and problems. And there is a few, you know, that they're just not seeing the ball well or they're not commanding their pitch as well. But when we dig deeper and we start getting a little more into the individual aspects of, of why they're not having success, it almost always comes back to the pressure they feel on game day that they practice pretty well or, you know, or at least they, they feel like they're improving in practice. And then when the game happens or the tournaments happen on the weekend and they start feeling that pressure, you know, they really struggle with what they call the mental side. And I think the more that you and I have been able to break that down, we're starting to see that it really is about strategy. 
that they feel pretty good about what we call the you side of the game, you know, their physical capability and the, their mastered skill set. But all of a sudden, when they have to go play against another team or, or face another hitter, that it really does drive deeper into how do I know what to throw? How do I know what to look for from this? And, and it becomes more than just read and react. It becomes more than just my physical skills and capability. And when they start leveling up and competing against kids as, as good or better than them that are actually preparing to play against them, then it feels overwhelming. And that's when we see them struggling on game day, or at least as, as I mentioned earlier, it seems like the, it manifests itself on game day because obviously all the work that they've done, all the practice they put in, all the different specialists that they've seen – and and then they show up and and they don't have success on game day, and and we got a tendency to go all the way back to that that level one competitive advantage and the physical thing or mechanics, and truthfully, what you and I are starting to find out, especially having deeper conversations with these guys, that when we ask them literally, like, what were you thinking when you were standing on the rubber looking in at that catcher and he put the sign down? What were you thinking that that kept you from having confidence that that you could throw that pitch? You know, and a lot of times it's not that I didn't feel my mechanics that day or that I didn't believe I could throw that pitch. It was more about I didn't know if that was the right pitch to throw to that hitter. And to me, that's not a physical capability or even a mastery issue. That's a strategy issue. And when we're getting 12, 13, 14-year-old kids starting to tell us this, a lot of them before they even get to the 60-foot mound, and they're starting telling us that, you know, this team we were playing is really good, and this kid, you know, he hit two balls hard early in the game, and I didn't know what to throw. And and that kind of that's kind of what was, you know, making me doubt what I could do right then. Then that that does. That tells us that we need to have – some different conversations once these kids get out of preseason and are starting to to get into end season and going to go play, we have to give them a plan. And, and we're seeing now, as you and I've been doing that over the last few months, that kids are getting it, they're digging it. And, and it's kind of opened even the parents' eyes and some of their coaches' eyes to like, Hey man, what kind of adjustments have you guys made? And, and why do you, why do you, uh, pitch with so much more confidence now and and honestly is what we talked about the last time we're starting to see that it affects their physical capability when they have a strategy all of a sudden they feel confident they pitch at max velocity or they execute more pitches or more quality pitches better more often and execution is better and so again man I, I, you can break down what you're seeing from the hitting side but from the pitching side man when these kids starting to feel like even at 12 or 13, like they got a strategy to go along with their physical capability and their mastered skills or, or at least skills that they trust up to this point, then we're having a lot more game day success and the kids are having a lot more fun and baseball ain't as boring. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, guys are coming to us because they want to show up on game day. They recognize that there are there's specific work that they need to put in, and 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 even our remote clients, man, they got they got coaches for everything, and, and these coaches are doing a great job developing their competitive advantage, but they call us because they're not showing up on game day, and game day ultimately is what everybody wants, what the parents want, what the player wants, what the coaches want. Nobody's looking for Hall of Fame practice players. So game day, why people call us, because we take that conversation to the next level. You know, game day, game day for us is is about how we show up. You know, it's about taking our game plan and showing up. It's about taking what we know and, and being confident in our preparation to show up and actually get ready to compete against guys that are just as good, if not better than us. Game day is about making real-time adjustments based on what we are seeing and what we are doing. Am I consistently late? Am I consistently early? Am I swinging at bad pitches? Is that pitcher tipping pitches? Is he falling behind 
um, the count? Is he does he can he throw his offbeat for a strike? You know, what am I taking? Based real time information, what am I taking, and how am I using this to gain a strategic advantage over that opponent, over that pitcher, or over that hitter? Game day for us is about controlling our emotion and playing the game one pitch at a time, staying present. And, and, you know, we talk about that a lot. You hear that. People talk about, hey, man, stay present, control your emotion. But what does that really mean for us? It's by it's our, it's our pre-pitch routine and it's our post-pitch routine and, and going through our process each time, going through, you know, that mental part, going through that, uh, intellectual part and then that physical part, going through our pre-pitch routine to allow us to stay present and be ready to compete on that very next pitch. And, and you know what, dude? All of this stuff has got to be taught in practice. You know, we need guys, uh, you know, we got to help guys. We need to get guys. We need to help them develop their process, you know, understanding what they do well, you know, mastering their sick process on the hitting side, mastering their sick process. They have that first act being seeing spin, really working on seeing spin as early as possible, see the ball as long and as early as possible. And then the T, which the, the, the T of the stick part is the timing piece. So understanding that we got to be on time twice to see the ball out of the hand and get that foot down. And then the K is going to be the knowledge of their zone. Really start to understand their zone, not really, and don't expand it. You know, stay within their zone. And then last part is going to be the swing. You know, and again, this is our, our process for the swing. And then we have the process for hitting, which is what we develop through our command hitting process, which is all about executing the stick process while executing situational and situation and, and counts. And, uh, you know, then we take this man and now we can, now we can develop the strategy that we can use on game day. And, and now, so when we never, whenever we take, you know, what's going on on game day, you know, instead of wanting to kind of go back and blame it on the mechanics or, or blame it on the mental game, our guide really start to understand that, you know, it's really more about, about strategy. And what are you thinking about? And what are you seeing when you get into that box? Because if you show up on game day prepared and you have a strategy, your mental game will be in check. Game day pressure isn't pressure if you have strategy. You know, and we talk a little bit about this. You know, we talk quite a bit actually about, about the you part, which is the, which is good, which is the training piece, which baseball is doing really good at. But then there's the them part, the opponent, the, the the strategy. You know, we want strategic thinkers. And, and this gets developed in practice. And actually more so during post-game evaluation, which is cool because our guys, we don't jump all the way back to mechanics. We start with strategy and what they're thinking and what they're seeing in the real game. Well, I think what we're seeing too, Jeff, is we know – that the guys that see the game this way train better. The guys that see the game this way don't focus so much on what everybody else is doing and are, are a lot more focused on what they're capable of doing. And it's almost like it for, for some guys, it's almost like we unlock a part of their mind that says, you know what? I can quit comparing myself to everybody else and I can truly focus on what I'm good at what I understand. And then as they grow their, like you said, their capability of watching a game and reading what just happened and being able to sit here and make that tiny adjustment. And that's what pitching is, man. I make a pitch and let's see how the hitter reacts. Let's see what happens. And, and, and then I make an adjustment based on what I see. And again, it's not some nuanced sequence pattern that I'm looking for. It's the reality of, the game is played in real time. Good players make adjustments, pitch to pitch and a bat to a bat. And if you don't grasp that concept, 
then whenever you level up and start playing against guys that, that are just as physically good and capable as you are and, and have some mastered baseball skill sets of, that, they're, that they feel confident in, then you're going to struggle if they got a strategy and they got an idea of what you're going to do to them and, and you can't make those adjustments. And I think we get so focused on these young players about the physical capability long before they did, they're ever going to reach their peak performance, you know? So instead of us teaching these guys, the strategic side of the game and, and how to watch a game. So when they do physically develop and grow and, and whether you're a late bloomer or whether you're somebody that's just really trying to to physically get bigger, faster, stronger, the athletic part of this, that competitive advantage piece, once they see that, and now all of a sudden the training piece and and the things that they thought was the problem rarely is the problem. A lot of times that's really what they thought was going to happen and it didn't happen. And then baseball is such that, that reactionary sport that it happens so fast and in real time the preparation piece, I think, gets exposed. And if you didn't really have a strategy, even at the younger levels, when they're playing in these hyper competitive tournaments and where every team is really good, I think these kids and these parents are coming back and they're like, dude, I see what you're saying now. Like, you know, that kid was that kid was disciplined at the plate. He took some nasty pitches. You know what I mean? So you're starting to see these conversations that you would think would be more like a college and pro conversation. And we're having those conversations with 13 and 14 year olds coming back from these elite level tournaments. And I think it's starting to to turn that light bulb on in their mind that, Hey man, there's more to this than me just throwing hard. There's more to this than me being able to throw O2 curveballs in the dirt that, hey, man, the hitters are seeing that I'm probably not going to throw that curveball for a strike, and he's just taking that 0-2 pitch, and now it's 1-2, and now what do I do next? And so that's cool, man. I think when we start having those conversations with pitchers and hitters, then we know that, hey, man, boom, now we're starting to get there, and and we're having the right conversations. Yeah, you know, the conversation, you know, lead up to discussing what adjustments – were made or what adjustments should have been made. You know, these things have to be taught. We can't we can't assume that they that exactly. guys understand yep. Yep. what adjustment they need to make and, and why they need to make it. Because otherwise the the, the default always the the mechanics. Yep. And but but again, what was going on with their thinking? Are they seeing the ball? Were they on time? Are they swinging at good pitch? Man, all those things lead to issues. So what adjustment do we right. need to make? And these are the conversations where you really start to see guys grow because now they have the understanding and, and now they can make adjustments right then and there on the fly. Absolutely. But the big takeaway I want I want everybody to take away from today is that game day is a culmination of a lot of things. It's a culmination of your practice habits and routines. It's a culmination of have you taken care of yourself? Are you doing your recovery, your strength conditioning program? And and have you really practiced till mastery to where you're confident in in what you're going to try to do in that game? And then once you see that, then really having a strategy and how we watch a game is ultimately going to dictate how we read and study our opponent and how we look at it. And, and we're going to see that it's really going to show up in on game day more than stats. It's going to show up in how you played the game. Cause sometimes the stats don't always tell the story, right. but the way you played that day and, and the way you seen the game and your preparation usually gets exposed or it gets to the point where it drives your success. And, and either way, that's the post-game evaluations and the conversations we want to have because that's where growth happens. And then maybe it is a mechanics thing that we need to adjust. Maybe it is a pitch that we just don't fully trust in certain situations and count yet. But at the end of the day, if we have that mindset about how we assess, how we prepared and, and our strategy, and was we able to execute it, 
then that's where growth happens. And that's where the kids, again, as we always say, baseball's not boring. Then when you have a strategy, baseball's not boring. It's just a matter of going out and competing and, and, and having fun. And, and let's see how it turns out. Yeah, Daryl, the takeaway for me, is going to be that understanding that game day, you know, on game day, game day, they series of adjustments and adjustments are taught. And adjustments are based off what guys they're seeing and what they're thinking in real time. You know, the game of baseball needs and wants strategic thinkers. Awesome, man. All right, guys. Well, hey, again, you know, if you guys are finding any value in these episodes, please leave us an objective review and then head over to strategic com and join our circle. We got some cool stuff that we're working on and we're ready to share it. So thank you all for listening in and uh, we'll catch you in the next episode. Mm-hmm.